I know Tourist and Jungle Awareness Month has come and gone, but here is a video about my personal experience with medications that has been requested from a viewer. And thank you for watching and for, for commenting and requesting this. I hope you enjoy. So my medi my experience with medications has varied greatly between medication to medication. Each one has been very different. Some have been just awful and I've also had very positive experiences with this medication too. The first I was on was Haloperidol or Haldol also known as. I was put on it when I was 12 for four months and it was the most messed up period of my life. Like I should never have been put on it I found out later and my doctor lied about why she put me on it. Which wasn't cool. I started right, almost immediately I started having really severe negative side effects or reverse effects. Still every month my doctor doubled my dosage and I just kept getting worse and worse. Here's the effects I was having. I stopped talking to everyone, like I just couldn't not seem to speak when anyone would talk to me or if I wanted to, I'd just be silent and we awkward. I when my friends would talk to me, I would just burst into tears and start crying for no reason. I was very depressed, very suicidal, very narcoleptic. I just fall, fell asleep all over all the time, like anywhere. Like I'd be in class and just drop face first into my desk. And yeah, that was uh, weird. And I was also extremely paranoid. I was having both visual and auditory hallucinations. Like I was seeing what I thought were germs always everywhere and if they would end up get kind of growing onto me or spreading to me, I would freak out and scratch my skin off and even as even if I had like people trying to hold me back and restrain me to stop me from it, I'd still be doing everything I could to get them off. I would always see something that I looked like a mouse like underneath my skin, like to start running around. And whenever that would pop up, I whatever was in my hand, like I would immediately just jab into my skin and start trying to like dig this thing out to remove it. It got so bad that I was no longer allowed to eat with regular like utensils. I was only allowed to use like rubber tipped baby spoons for teething babies and stuff because I couldn't hurt myself with them. I had to be searched before going into the shower and monitored while I was in the shower because I would always try and sneak steel wool pot scrubbers into in with me to scrub my skin off. And I was always hearing voices like constantly making fun of me and conspiring against me, which is why I was so paranoid and thought I was being watched and spied on constantly. I covered my bedroom, all my bedroom walls and windows with thick layers of black plastic like that I got from just a bunch a couple bit boxes of plastic uh, garbage bags and just made sure like there's like a good thick layer so like there's no light or anything there so there's no possible way that any one could be able to like see me through any crack in the wall or anything I was no longer able to read or write like seriously like I was in grade seven and just suddenly be I could not read or write anymore like it would take me about a half an hour to write my name, which is only five letters long, and the letters would go start go small and big, and just like it was a challenge for me, and it was so difficult. I couldn't tie my shoes anymore, and this was all so frustrating because like I was sure I was going to fail with grade seven and have to be held back, and amazingly I didn't. But I also had one really great teacher who helped me with like all my classes, so. He, uh, even though the rest of the teachers chose just to punish me. And that's not even the, all of my side effects. I dealt with much more, like, it was non-stop, like, the whole four months. And as soon as, like, and when I see my neurologist, my first neurologist, and got diagnosed with Tourette's after four months of this, I was immediately taken off and found out that I should never have been on such a powerful antipsychotic, which is meant for treating mainly schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorders. And yeah, like I was on like a dangerously high dosage too. 
my neurologist like immediately took me off within two days I was back to normal my Tourette's got better I had my tics like reduced like I it was like I was before like being on it I was only put on I was only put on it at first because I got hospitalized for having a two week long attack and but during my attacks I can't walk on my own I can't stand on my own I need help like I need help like sitting to get sitting up and to feed myself and everything and so like when it's like two weeks on like I've going off for over a week and when I got hospitalized my body hurt so much and I like wasn't able to do anything for myself and the attack was just getting worse and worse and worse as it got so that's why my doc when my doctor found out about what was going on and decided that I should be put on haloperidol when I got back to flim flon that's where my, my hometown is I me and my mom went to my doctor and asked her why she put me on haloperidol when the neurologist said she had never even heard about me until like two weeks before my appointment to see her and she never once suggested that I be put on it especially not like the this high of a dosage as I was her response was she assumed my town was too small of a community for anyone to have Tourette's so the best option she could think of was dosing me up with dangerous antipsychotics. It was awful. Yeah, yeah. Not happy about that. I was totally scared off of medications like after that, so I would refuse to take anything again for 10 years. Uh, after 10 years, I suddenly developed new and loud t vocal tics that were very active. My usual vocal tics have always just been rapid speech or stuttering like when, when I'm trying to slow down when I'm talking and tongue clicking like but since I got my tongue pierced the bead gets in the way so my tongue doesn't suction to my, my mouth anymore on its own so I don't click anymore since getting that done so, which is great you said I get people call me chipmunk because of how much I clicked and some, but I don't, I don't know where like when I'm 22 years old I just suddenly developed these very loud, very high pitched squeaks and squeals. And the first, when I first developed, like it was like a full week of like non stop, like these noises. And like it even got to the point that I couldn't sleep and I was having trouble breathing or eating because I was just like, the mouth was constantly going. And so I saw a neurologist again and just said, because uh, I was scared they were going to turning verbal because I don't like as much as I like to say obscene or like or just, or just yell like random things like sometimes I like to have control over that like even like I don't I like if I try to get if when it's like can be embarrassing and like hard enough to deal with especially like in public when people are like watching and just like judging and even though like I don't care what other people's opinions are like I just that's one thing I do actually care about is how I'm being judged, how negatively like I'm being judged from people and like not knowing why I'm doing the things I'm doing and just already making up their assumptions like I've been accused of being on drugs, I've been accused of just being annoying for to, or to annoy people for just for whatever reason. I get a lot of Karen's yelling at me about that. I apparently I'm doing it to personally offend people, or just wanting attention, just, or also just I don't know. I've also had been told I don't know anything. I obviously don't know what Tourette's is because I'm not swearing. That is super annoying. <laughs> but so I was decide my doctor put me on pimazide and. I was only on it for seven weeks because of the side effects I had. They were not nearly as bad as haloperidol, but I just lost all emotions. Like I was blank. I didn't feel anything. Like I, the only thing I could really feel was just my heart, like pounding, like rapidly, like nonstop. Like it got to so bad. Like it got so fast that like you could see my chest like m like bouncing, and I couldn't sleep. Like in a t two week period, I got not even a total of eight hours over those 14 days of sleep 
and like everything my lungs hurt like it was getting hard to breathe my chest hurt my ribs were cramping so when I went back for my follow-up I was obviously immediately taken off of it um the next the third medication I tried was clonidine which wasn't very the smartest uh, thing to put me on since it is meant to treat the high blood pressure and I tend to usually have low blood pressure as already and so my blood pressure like dropped so low that I was constantly passing out like if every time I stood up I fainted I couldn't stay awake for more than like two or three hours a day and only like 15 minute chunks I had to have somebody come with me to get me to all my doctor's appointments or like anything because I would fall asleep I couldn't stay awake long enough to get anywhere and I need help like getting up out of vehicles and getting into the clinics and getting up from the wait chair in the waiting room and so on so I when I went for my follow-up with my neurologist after like five weeks I was taken off that and that is the short the medication that I tried for the shortest period the next, the fourth, and currently last medication I tried was Risperidone, and it worked wonders for me. No, it was for the first week. I was very just extremely tired, but once I got past that week, no side effects. My tics were greatly reduced, and they're so mild that you wouldn't even be able to tell I had Tourette's. You just maybe a little finger tap or something that no one even noticed. I would only have one or two attacks a year. They'd last that like 15 to 17 hours most. I know that doesn't sound very good, but it is a huge improvement from my like four to 12 attacks a year that last like days. Like like the average is about two to three days. Like 15 hours is the shortest uh, attack I've had. And that was while I was on his spirit on. And like my during the attacks, they were mild. Like I could walk on my own. I could feed myself. I could like sit up and still function even during while my my attack. But while but I, that's not possible. Like otherwise, like without the respirator. But and not and also it not only like greatly helped my my threats. It had a significant improvement with my bipolar disorder. Like. I still had full range of my emotions and feelings, I just couldn't hit manic highs and lows, which was wonderful. Like, I wish I could still be on it. Like, I never had felt so stable ever in my life. Like, I actually felt like I could handle life. Like, I wasn't ha having my mood swings or freaking out or going in manic highs and then getting myself into trouble because I need to be like on the go and being like around people constantly or getting have my manic lows and just being like everything feels hopeless and useless and like me and getting suicidal feeling and then like being a jerk and flipping out on like everyone who tries to talk to me so it was really pleasant not dealing with any of that but unfortunately I ended up having after when I was 28, I discovering I have some heart problems and had to be taken off for on because it's not recommended for anyone with any type of heart issues because of how it affects the heart. If I, if I did have the heart problems, or like, you know, for if it was safe for people with heart issues or whatever, I would definitely still be taking it. There's no way I would have ever chose to stop taking it on my own. Like, because I was so much better. There's, I haven't taken any medication. I've been tried on any new medication since. Um, just because after finding out about the heart stuff and how sensitive I am to like side effects for most things. So I'm just been off for a night now. There is a treatment that I have actually been interested in for a while now. Like I've been doing a lot of research on it. And, but it's not a medication. It's deep brain stimulation. It's a neurosurgical procedure that uh, involves a, like implanting a chip into the brain and wiring it to a battery pack in your chest like a pacemaker. But that's it for now. Thank you for watching and if you have any comments leave them in the below. Thank you, bye!